Welcome to Console Cowboys. In this video, we're going to cover a bit of background before we start exploiting applications. Why? Because most of my audience are hackers, not Ethereum developers, nor blockchain architects, and may not know what a smart contract is. So I'm going to cover a bit of info before we start hopping directly into exploitation. If you're familiar with blockchain technology, skip to the next video where we'll start attacking smart contracts. All right, if you're still here, I will attempt to provide a bare bones overview. Let's start with what we know about centralized application architecture. In a standard application model and client server, we generally have the following. We have our front end, which is what the user sees, such as an HTML page to access something like Facebook. We have our server side code that handles the business logic, such as APIs that access all of the data. Then we have the back end, which stores all of our data, for example, a MySQL server or a MongoDB database. Now with a dApp on the blockchain or a decentralized application, you have a similar front end and a server side technology. However, you use a smart contract as your access to the blockchain. Your smart contract is kind of like an API. And dApps are Ethereum enabled websites using smart contracts as an API to the blockchain ledger. A blockchain is a peer-to-peer -peer decentralized data store. The backend is distributed across thousands of nodes in its entirety on each node, meaning every single node has a full database of information called a ledger. The second difference is that the ledger is immutable, meaning once data goes in, data cannot be changed. This will come into play later in our discussion about smart contracts. The blockchain is synchronized by a consensus mechanism you may be familiar with called mining, or more accurately, proof of work. There's also something called proof of stake. Consensus verifies the accuracy of each calculated block's hash. Each block contains transactions from the transaction pool. Blocks transactions are combined with announce. The results must meet the difficulty requirements currently on the network. Once a block is found and accepted, it places them on the blockchain. The point of consensus is that no central authority controls the nodes. No one can shut them down as no single node is critical to the process. Instead, there is a consensus from all live nodes. Here's some other things to note before we get started with exploitation. The first thing to note is the immutability aspect. So the thing is, our smart contracts are located on the blockchain, and the blockchain is immutable. This means that an agile development model is not going to work once the contract is deployed. This means that updates to the contracts are next to impossible. All you can really do is create a kill switch or fail-safe functions. These functions disable the contract and execute some actions if something goes wrong before going permanently dormant. If you do not include a kill switch, the contract is open and available and you can't remove it. The second thing to note is that code is generally open source, which means that people like ourselves are manually bug hunting smart contracts and running static analysis tools on the code. When issues are found, the only course of action is to kill the current contract with a kill switch, which still remains on the blockchain, then deploy a whole new version of the contract. So it's generally advisable to keep smart contracts simple. Instead, keep any complicated logic in the application's middle layer. The third thing to note is that security in the development lifecycle is lacking. Many projects do not even think about an SDLC. They rarely add penetration testing in the development stages, if at all. At best, there is a bug bounty before the release of a blockchain mainnet, which usually gets hacked to hell and delayed when it's ripped apart by hackers. Things are getting better, but they are still behind the curve as the technology is new. The blockchain space is mostly developers and marketers, not hackers or security testers. This is where we come in. The fourth and final note before we get into exploitation is the potential for broken crypto. If sensitive data is placed on the blockchain, it's there forever which means that if a cryptographic algorithm is broken, anything which is encrypted with that algorithm is now accessible to the attacker. And we all know that algorithms are eventually broken. So it's always advisable to keep sensitive data hashed for integrity on the blockchain, but not stored on the blockchain directly. With all of the background out of the way, we can now get into some exploitation. So in the next video, we're going to start with re-entrancy attacks. If you learned anything in this video, please hit the like button below. If you want to be notified of new videos, hit the subscribe button below, and I'll catch you in the next video.